Are you always getting taken advantage of despite your goodness? Or maybe you know someone um, that is always seem, seeming to get taken advantage of uh, and it ends up in their detriment. Stay tuned on this episode of Hearing God. Tell me. I hear you. Is it you? Is it you? I hear you. And I just, uh, I just have a heart to, to share on this matter. We hear about a lot in Luke 6.30 to give to everyone who asks of you. And we know as Christians, uh, it's important that we give to the body of Christ. Uh, We learned that in the book of Acts, didn't we? But we also know that we're to also extend our generosity to everyone, just as Jesus did. Um, Even the breadcrumbs that fell under the table, you know? So... Uh, giving is an uh, inherent part of who we are as Christians, and it just shows our love. But, um, you know, there, there are instances where you can see these things really get taken advantage of and going overboard, and so sometimes people just can't seem to draw the line or understand, you know, what is too much. Or where can I stop? Uh, one thing we need to note is that in the scriptures, it's talking about in need versus in want. And that's something that you can see in society. Uh, the way our society is set up, uh, there are many governmental programs and there are many things to where people are able to receive aid and, um, you know, through Medicaid, welfare, and and just various things to where people, um, just through our society, um, obviously, as the body of Christ, um, who we hang out with is important, too. So, that would be a, a number one thing I would like to say is, you know, as you've been refining your life, uh, are you hanging around the right kind of crowd? You know, are you hanging around with with Christians and surrounding yourself in community um, and attending to their needs, or are you just kind of walking along and and uh, being buddy buddy with just everybody? Um, It's a little bit different with who we have the intimate fellowship with versus, you know, walking down the street. You know, the the person down the street panhandling, if they at, you know, they're like, I don't have a job, I need a car to go do this and this, would be a little bit different than if there's somebody in your church, somebody that you know, you fellowship with, and hey, you know, I need a car, I need, you know, it's a little bit different there. So, um, how are you refining in, in your walk and who are you fellowshipping with? Um, are there friends or people that drag you down into sin or, or bad areas that you just continue to hang on to? Um, and people like that maybe take advantage of you when you are in fellowship or you know someone, uh, you know, you you know their lifestyle and you know they have a vetted need for something and so that your money isn't aiding and abetting sin. I mean, you would not want that. You would not want uh, to turn around and see that person who took money or who begged for money from you saying one thing and then going down the street and smoking pot you know you don't want to do that so um, this brings about the a huge important thing uh, 
and it, it's what I use, is the Holy Spirit. Uh, that's something that you can know every single time. And um, I tell you what, I have a series called the Spiritual House Cleaning Series on YouTube. And it goes through every point of access where the enemy can get in there, whether it's generational or um, maybe lies that you've believed or maybe hurtful things have happened to you and then you have a negative confession about it and then you begin to cycle down into this rutted way of living and then you just can't seem to get out of that rut. And one thing about um, a person that is constantly taken advantage of that you can begin to know is the, the cycle of your thought life. You have to begin to purify your thoughts on and, and just reflect on motives and intents. First of all, things that are with you. Um, there could be ulterior motive within yourself of why you want to give. Is it because it gives you status or fame? Is it somehow calling attention to yourself? I can remember going to a church in the, in the city, had someone from out of town come in and a bunch of people went to it and uh, it kind of shocked me and I realized that this person was kind of false because at the end of the service they had some big, uh, big thing about money, you know, oh, you know, if I need ten people given a thousand dollars and blah, 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 you know, some big shake and dance thing. And within, I knew by the Holy Spirit that it was not right. It was not right to uh, pigeonhole people like that. Uh, the spirit about it was just all wrong. And so, um, what happened is there were some people, and, and I really feel like they were motivated by a kind of a prideful look at me thing, because they did not have the funds to donate, which is completely irresponsible. 1 Timothy 5.8 but if any provide not for his own, and specifically for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. I mean, that's pretty bad. But even in uh, Acts 3, you know, Peter didn't honor the person's requests. They're sitting there begging for money, and Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I give thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk, rise up and walk. So, I mean, that's totally Holy Spirit led. So, if, if our motives are not pure in doing things, that is a huge roadblock. But other, other big things are, like I mentioned with the spiritual house cleaning series, are ways in which... Uh, the enemy has gained access into our lives and shut us down from abundant living. And you really need to write down and kind of write things out. And like, especially if, if you have a serious problem with this, and then ask yourself, what is the fruit? Okay, I give to this person, they come back again. Uh, do they really need me? Go through, go through, go through. Um, and if you are not baptized in the Holy Spirit, if you haven't received Jesus for more than just salvation, but just offered him your life uh, to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I'll put a link up uh, so that you know that you know that you know that you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. Um, it's a great Derek Prince video. Um, and in the end, he will lead you in getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. Um, so, 
that is, you know, being a conduit of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth, so you will know um, what is honorable giving outside of the body of Christ. What I talk about in the spiritual house cleaning series is about taking taking thought, taking captive every thought into the obedience of Jesus Christ. And so, one big anchor is a spirit of guilt. Um, doubt can be another one, and condemnation. So that, even to your detriment, when when you decide, you know what, I gave to them last time, I'm, I know they're, you know, they're not like third world country living, I know that they can get by, um, but then comes guilt or condemnation thoughts that begin to hammer so much over and over and over again until you give in. But then what is the fruit of that? Do you really have joyful giving? Does it really feel good? Does it really feel right? Do you feel that confirmation of the Holy Spirit that says, yes, uh, good and faithful servant, thank you so much. You know, you know, you know how you should feel, you know how they should feel. And um, over and over again in society, you know, I've, I heard so much where really people that are really good are not looking so much for the hand out as they are the hand up. And when people give the hand out so much, they can become apathetic, lazy, slothful. And so then what you're actually doing is an enabling a lifestyle of sin. And so you're becoming a partaker in that. And so if, you, if you're not having that, that joyful feeling, if you're not seeing wonderful fruit, then you should be paying attention. Uh, we know things by their fruit. So, I, I, at the very end of the Spiritual House Cleaning series, uh, as, as a, I walk through everything, the ending is deliverance. And the whole idea of deliverance being completely possessed by the devil is just completely not biblical. I just want to share this. Um, I often get songs um, from the Lord. And I remember a time when I was, um, oh, was dealing with uh, the effects of of just running away and hiding from problems. And the Lord put this song in my head. I can't remember if it was uh, the group Yes or Rush. I don't know. They're all kind of the same to me. I don't listen to the stuff. It's just... But the song verse said, If you choose not to decide, you still had have made a choice. And that is so true with everything with with these ending ages, with the lukewarm church, if we're not dealing with getting our wedding garment spotless and bright and pure, we are still making a choice, and it's not a good one. Our whole life needs to be just like St. John the Baptist preached in the wilderness, to be clean to seek after holiness our entire life. And so areas even where uh, we're allowing ourselves to be taken advantage of, um, that is, do you think that is pleasing to the Lord? Where we're allowing ourselves to throw away our abundant life. It's really twisted thinking. Um, it's kind of messed up. Uh, the Lord wants us to, to have abundant living in, in all respects. And, and it isn't just in wealth, but um, 
if we are, are, are constantly giving, 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 and uh, letting, allowing ourselves to be just bled dry, taken advantage of, to where we're enabling others' laziness and slothfulness. And um, can you see how bad this, this is when you really look at the big picture? So um, I just wanted to share that about this today. And uh, I just want to encourage that if, if this maybe has been you, um, to uh, just to begin to reflect over your life, um, do check out the Spiritual House Cleaning Series, please. I hope you'll check it out because uh, you need to be free. Well, if I was to add anything to what Freedom was talking about, because obviously, you know, to pray before you give to anybody because God has given you what you have to begin with and we should always seek discernment and wisdom on uh, whom we shall share that with or blessed with and sometimes you know if you have that same person that continues to come back uh, because they have that same issue you know God may be trying to deal with them in a certain manner to expose something in their life that they need to correct or they need to address and uh, you know, having a little struggle in their life may bring them to that understanding bring them back to, to crying out to God and uh, you know sometimes we're not uh, helping the situation by just kicking the can down the, uh, the street per se but always pray and always seek wisdom because, uh, you know, God knows everyone's need and uh, we shouldn't do it just to seek gratification within our life or stature or anything like that. Sometimes, sometimes we like to, to tr twist the scriptures that, you know, oh, if I'm short on money, I need to give because by giving, God will bless me. That's not scriptural at all we, we've kind of twisted that around you know, we should give because God has given to us and we want to help uh, you know spread the gospel in some form or fashion Lord God we just come to you and just ask for your hand upon us as uh, we struggle to get over uh, the oppression of being taken advantage of Lord God just reveal to us um through the power of your most holy spirit those uh areas of weakness